What's going on YouTube? So the Honda Civic is one of those vehicles you see everywhere since this has long been one of the most popular sedans in America. This current generation in particular has gotten a lot of praise since it came out six years ago. But now that we've seen the all new Civic prototype, should you go ahead and buy this one or wait for the new one? Let's go ahead and find out. Now, of course, since this is the last model year of this generation, you're not going to see any huge changes to the exterior design. Uh, but arguably, it really doesn't need anything because this has always been a really stylish offering in this class. So starting out in your front here, uh, you still got that black grille that's going to go across all of the trim levels and make for a really nice contrasting look with most of the different colors, including this blue. Uh, down here at the bottom, also on the Sport model, you'll notice a black accent that traces around the fog light. And then coming over here to your headlights, uh, these are going to be halogen headlights on all the models except for the fully loaded Touring model, which is going to come with a full LED setup. However, you will still at least have the LED daytime running light. And then also, all but the base model will come with fog lights. Now, one of my favorite things about the sport trim has always been the wheels because even though this is only the second to base trim level, it has the same wheels as the fully loaded Tourings, the 18 inch contrast alloys, which I think look very nice. Now, the EX trim levels, those are going to come with 17 inch alloys, and then you have a steel wheel on your LX trim level. And then coming up here to your mirrors, they're always going to be body colored. Uh, however, when you get to the EX trim level and above, that's where you'll start to get some features like heating and your lane watch camera system. So let's go ahead and talk about the rear design. And I have to say, even though this is a pretty old vehicle, I still really, really like the exterior design, especially here in the rear, because it just has a very cohesive and good sporty look. Now, breaking down what you're going to get as far as this sport model goes, you're going to have a black spoiler up top. Uh, which contrasts nicely with this blue paint. Then we also have partially LED tail lights. All the accenting is LED, however, the brake light, turn signal, and reverse light are incandescent. And then dropping down, we also have this sporty diffuser on this model, and the sport is going to be the only one that gets the center mounted exhaust, which is a really cool touch for a vehicle in this class. Now, Honda's also going to kill it when it comes to the safety systems, since they're throwing in all of them standard across all of the entire Civic lineup. That's going to be all the stuff you like, like Ford Emergency Braking with Pedestrian Detection, Adaptive Cruise Control, Auto High Beam Headlamps, as well as Lane Keeping Assist. But anyway guys, that's going to sum up the sporty exterior design of this 2021 Civic. Now let's go ahead and hop on the inside, see if there's anything new in there before we take it out in a spin. And before we do all of that, be sure to make me happy and hit that subscribe button down below. So on the 2021 Civic, Honda does continue to give you the smart entry system with remote start on all but the base model. And then to get inside the vehicle itself, just grab behind the handle since there is a sensor. Alright, so taking a look inside of this cabin, of course, since this is the last model year of this generation, you're not going to see any significant changes. Um, however, this has always had a pretty nice cabin for the class. The same also holds true for the different material and color options. So your LX through your EX trim level will continue to come with cloth seating, and then your EXL and your Touring trim levels will come with leather seating. And then as far as your color options, those are going to be black, gray, or ivory on every single trim level, except for the Sport, where it is black only. Now turning over here to your door trim, you'll see the same materials reflected up here. So we have a leatherette material that covers the armrest. Uh, we have a textured plastic right here in the middle part. And then this top part is going to be soft touch with a little silver accent. As far as your windows, they're going to be one-touch auto up and down for your driver and your passenger. 
Of course, you'll see we have the aluminum plates here with this sport. And as far as the seats are concerned, you're gonna have a six-way manual adjusting seat on your lower two trim levels, an eight-way power adjusting seat on the EX trim level and above. And taking a closer look at the seat itself, as you can see, it is mostly a cloth material, although there is a little bit of leatherette here on the outside edges, and you do have a really nice design in the middle. Now, since this generation came out, this cabin has really re received a lot of praise, uh, and I'll continue to praise it in 2021. Uh, only part of the top dash that's going to be a hard touch will be right above the gauge cluster. Everything else is going to be finished in a nicely grained soft touch plastic. Uh, down below here, we have a black trim. Again, more soft touch plastic with a stitching detail. And then as we move down lower, of course, you're going to run into some harder touch materials, but everything in here fits together really, really nicely. Uh, and feels very solid. Now in all but the base model, put your foot on the brake and press the button to start. Now taking a look at our gauge cluster here, Honda does include the seven inch digital gauge cluster across every single trim level. Uh, and this has all the typical functions you have come to expect, including things for your safety systems. And then coming back to the steering wheel itself, of course we do have electric power assisted steering and Honda will wrap it with leather if you choose the EXL Touring or this Sport trim level. Now up top you would have rain sensing wipers on the Touring trim level and then as far as the wheel itself it is going to be manual tilt and telescoping across all models and heating is not available. But let's go ahead and talk about interior storage because even after all this time Really, no one has come up with a better way to do this than Honda. So, slide this back for your center console and you can lift it up. As you see, you have an enormous amount of space. It goes way down there. Uh, it's really impressive they can extract so much space out of a compact sedan. You got your two cup holders. You have an additional cup holder down there. And when we get our coupons out, really there's a ton of different places we can stick them, but we can throw them in right there. And obviously that's no problem whatsoever. However, there's still a lot more space after that. You've got another big tray up here with a nice rubber lining. And then you have an entire pass-through area where you can again store even more things and you have some more connections down there. So really this is still the class leader as far as interior storage goes. Now taking a look at our shifter here, this is just a traditional style shifter. So you pull back for drive, of course, and then you can go back one more time to the S that's for sport and that will allow you to shift with the paddle shifters through some manual simulated gears here on the sport trim level. Heading into reverse, of course, you will find a standard backup camera. And so long as you choose anything except for the base LX, you will also have the active trajectory as well as the three different angles to choose between. And then right next to the shifter, you have your standard electronic parking brake and brake hold button. Now moving on up the dashboard, that brings us to our climate controls. So Honda does continue to give you an automatic climate control setup on every single model. It's going to be single zone on the LX and Sport, dual zone on the EX and above. Uh, since there's a Sport model, of course, it is the single zone setup. So you make your adjustments, you'll see them reflect up there. Uh, most of the things have physical buttons, but a few functions like your zones will require you press the climate button and make those adjustments in the display. Okay, so now that brings us here to our audio system. So the Sport Trim is coming with a 180 watt eight speaker sound system. That's gonna be the middle option and we'll go ahead and take a sample of it. So overall sound quality is quite nice for this price point. Uh, I do think it has a pretty full sound to it. All right, so now we'll go ahead and look next at our displays. So the LX trim level will continue to have a five inch display. Everything else will come with this seven inch display. Now, as you can probably tell, nothing has changed as far as the software 
uh, goes this year. So it still has the older style Honda Link system with the older graphics. Um, as far as your features though, you still have plenty of features. You're gonna have standard Android Auto and standard Apple CarPlay, so long as you have this seven inch display. And then the Touring model will have built-in navigation. And moving on up here, we have a manual dimming mirror it would be auto dimming on EXL and Touring. And then up at the very top, the Sport does not throw in a moonroof. You will have to get at least the next trim level, the EX or above to have a power moonroof. So sitting in the Civic's rear seat, this has always been an area that this car has really excelled at and that continues, of course, this year. So as far as the space is concerned, it's gonna come in at 37 inches of both leg and headroom, which does place it as larger than the Toyota Corolla, and it's right on par with that of the new Hyundai Elantra, as well as the Nissan Sentra. Now behind rear seating position, I have around five inches of rear leg room, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. And I do wanna point out that this seat back here is very, very comfortable. Now, as far as the features thrown in here in the middle, you're not really gonna have any on the Sport model. However, if you opt for the fully loaded Touring, you would have heated rear seats, and also on the higher end models, you would have a center armrest. Now, walking up to the trunk in order to open, just locate the button under the lid, and it does pop right open. Now, once inside, you're gonna find 15.1 cubic feet of space inside of this Civic sedan. And that does actually place it as larger than all of the main competition, like the Corolla Elantra and new Nissan Sentra. Uh, and there's a lot of space. And if this is not enough space for you, also keep in mind that Honda does offer the Civic hatch, which of course has more space back here as well. Now, as far as the features, uh, there is a carpeting along the floor. And if we lift it up, there's a spare tire. We can also fold the seat 60-40 split. Now over here on your passenger seat, of course, it is manually adjusting. Then if we open up the glove box, watch out because it is not dampened and it will bang against your knee. Um, but that said, there is a lot of space in here. Very impressed as far as our coupon test. Um, there is, I mean, ample, ample room. Uh, so you can be saving money. I know that those of you who buy Honda Civics are very practical people. So you can be uh, saving money on food as well. And then up top, we do have a sun visor with a mirror. We are missing the light, and if we detach it, you can also extend. All right, so there we are taking off the 2021 Civic Sport. So with the Civic Sedan, unlike the hatchback, you have two different engine choices. That's going to continue for 2021. So the LX and the Sport, they're going to come with the base 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine, no turbo. Uh, that's making 158 horsepower, 138 pound-feet of torque. Um, now if you get one of the upper trim levels, that comes with the 1.5 turbo, and that has 174 horsepower. Yeah, so... Uh quite a bit of a power boost, well about 20 some horsepower for the turbo. Probably the biggest thing you're going to notice about the difference between the two of those is that the turbo is going to be a little bit quieter upon its acceleration and stuff like that, since that one and a half liter turbo is one of the quietest engines ever. But just cruising along here, I do want to talk about the Civic Sport's uh, ride quality as well as its noise level entering into the cabin. I've always been impressed with the way this Civic rides. It's always been at the very top of the class in terms of its ride quality even with these large 18 inch wheels on the outside um, and as far as the noise level we'll go ahead and get a reading we're going 58 miles per hour show a test at 55 And we're looking at 59.8 decibels. It's almost 60, uh, which is a touch, touch louder than some of the other competition, but um, it's really not bad overall, and it's exactly what I would expect out of a vehicle in the second. as you probably know by this point this does have a continuously variable transmission um, and that brings me to our one and only 2021 change 
and that's the fact that the manual transmission has been dropped from the LX and the Sport trim level. Those previously it was standard on just those two trim levels. Um, so now you're going to have the CVT as standard equipment. Some of you guys will miss that, but Honda says not many people were opting for it. <laughs> um, I do hope with the next generation, though, they'll bring back the manual again because I, I, I just like to have the option for you auto enthusiasts out there. Yeah. And this car is one of the best driving in the entire segment, uh, so it definitely is good to have that option. Right. Why don't we talk about that? Yeah. I mean, you can just tell when you kind of go around corners and stuff. That is one thing, and this car has absolutely not aged at all. Uh, the competition is still trying to figure out how to catch up with the Civic. Uh, besides for the Mazda 3, these two are just far above uh, everything else in the segment. Uh, the way they drive and handle is just phenomenal. The steering really has a nice feel to it. It has decent heft um, when you go around corners. Body roll is kept to a minimum. You kind of feel like you set really low to the ground and it just feels like a very agile and fun vehicle to drive. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the practical stuff like fuel economy. Now, that's always been a very impressive part of the Civic. Um, and this Sport right here is rated at 32 combined. However, depending on the different trim levels that you get, it can go all the way up to 36 combined. So kind of pick whichever trim level you want for the fuel economy. And then as far as the pricing is concerned, uh, prices are going to rise around $1,000 since they have made that CVT standard on the LX and Sport trims, as you would expect. Uh, so the LX is now going to be $21,050, Sport $22,850, EX $24,2, EXL $35,4, and Touring $28,1. This one with this destination charge of $955 comes in at $23,805. Okay, so let's talk slam dunk and air ball. So, we'll start with the air ball today. Uh, that's going to be the technology. Um, it hasn't changed since this generation of the vehicle came out, despite the fact that Honda, back in 2017, I believe, they already came out with a new generation of their infotainment system. Uh, but yet we still have this old generation of the system which is a lot slower and has less features than that new generation. I think they should have switched it sometime about halfway through, but for whatever reason they didn't. Yeah. Now as far as our slam dunk, that's pretty much just going to be how this vehicle aged over its lifetime. Like Drew mentioned, this vehicle came out in 2016, was its first model year, and it really, I mean, so exceptional just how this vehicle has aged. It still goes head to head with a lot of these super new offerings, and I'm honestly, I'm not so sure it wouldn't beat them all in a comparison if we were to put it to it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the big thing about this video, of course, that's what we said in the introduction. You know, should you buy now or wait? I mean, there's reasons that, of course, we want to see the new generation. You may want to wait, but as far as where this sets in the class, this is still one of the best offerings in the class for sure. Um, it really just has so many things going for it, uh, as we've discussed. It's just aged so gracefully that, like you said, it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the newest things, and many of the rivals are still trying to catch up. Well guys, thanks for tuning in to this in-depth review of the 2021 Honda Civic Sport. We really appreciate you watching, and if you made it this far in the video, don't lie to me, I know you enjoyed at least a little bit or found it helpful, in which you should pay us back by hitting that subscribe button down below. It's completely free and all it's going to do is give you notifications on all of our most recent content, uh, so be sure to do that. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.